El Qalim, the pen, with the name of Allah, the most gracious, the ever merciful, the inkstand and the pen, and all that they, the owners of the pen, the scholars, write, bear witness to the fact that, by the grace of your Lord, you are not a madman at all. And most surely there awaits you a reward never to be cut off. And you possess outstandingly high standards of moral excellence. And you shall soon know, and so will these, the disbelievers, as to which of you is afflicted with madness. Surely your Lord knows best those who go astray from his path, and he also knows best those who follow the right guidance. So do not listen to those who cry lies to the truth. They wish you to be dishonestly pliant and not condemn their evil deeds in strong language. So they too would in return adopt a conciliatory attitude. Do not listen to any wretched swearer who is a backbiter, one who goes about with slander and evil talk. Any hinderer of people from doing good, a transgressor, a sinful person, nor listen to any hard-hearted ruffian who is, above all this, utterly useless and known for mischief-making. Only because he owns wealth and numerous sons and influence. When our messages are recited to him, he says, these are mere stories of the ancients, so outdated rubbish. We will soon brand him on the snout, and stigmatize him with the indelible disgrace. Thus have we made these opponents undergo a trial, just as we made the owners of a garden undergo it when they swore one to another that they would pluck all its fruit the next morning. And they were so sure of it that they made no reservation for the poor, and did not say, If it be Allah's will. So a sudden and awful visitation, a calamity from your Lord visited it while they were asleep, so that this garden became, as it were, a dark, desolate spot, whose all fruit had been already plucked. Meanwhile, they called one to another at the break of dawn, saying, Go forth early at dawn to your field, if you would pluck and gather the fruit. So they set out talking together in low tones, saying, Let not a single indigent person break through you to enter this garden today. And they repaired to the garden early with the dawn, thinking about themselves as having the power to shut out the poor from entry. When they saw it desolated, they said, We have surely mistaken the way. Rather, we have been deprived of all the fruit of our labor. Indeed, we have lost everything. The most upright man among them said, Did I not say to you, Why do you not give glory to God? Thereupon they said, Glory be to our Lord. Certainly we have been wrongdoers. Then some of them turned their faces to the others, reproaching one another. They said, O oh, woe to us! We have been indeed transgressors. We hope our Lord will give us something better instead of this. To our Lord surely we turn humbly. Such is the punishment for the disbelieving Meccans in this very life, and greater still is the punishment of the hereafter, if they but understand. There are indeed gardens of bliss with their Lord for those dutiful who carefully guard against evil. Are we to treat those who submit to our will as we treat those who sever their connection with us? What is wrong with you? How ill you judge! O Meccans, have you a book wherein you read that you will surely have it in the hereafter, whatever you choose? Or have you taken a covenant which is binding on us till the day of resurrection, that you shall have there all that you ask for? Ask them, which of them will vouch for that? Or have they any associate gods 
to vouch for it? If so, then let them bring their associated gods if they are truthful. On the day when there is severe affliction and the truth is laid bare and they will be called upon to prostrate themselves, but they will not be able to do so. Their looks will be downcast and they will be overwhelmed with disgrace. Before this state of theirs, they had been called upon to prostrate themselves before God while they were still safe and sound, but they had refused. Therefore, leave me alone to deal with those who deny this revelation. We shall overtake them, leading them to their ruin, step by step, in a manner they do not know. Yet I shall give them respite to mend their ways. Verily my plan is invincible and firm. Prophet, do you ask from them a reward for conveying to them the message of prophethood, so that they are weighed down by this undue debt which they find hard to pay? Or have they the knowledge of the unseen, so that they write it down to judge things in its light? So persevere patiently in carrying out the commandment of your Lord, and do not behave like the man of the big fish, Jonah, when he called to his Lord, and he was depressed with grief. Had not a gracious favor from his Lord reached him and saved him, he would surely have been cast off on a barren tract of land while he was in this miserable plight. But his Lord chose him and made him one of the righteous. Those who disbelieve would fain have dislodged you from your God-given mission with their angry looks when they heard the reminder full of admonition. And they say, He is certainly a madman. And this Qur'an is nothing less than a means to rise to eminence for all nations.